So what about this prosperity message the church is preaching? Well, I totally agree with everything it says in the scriptures about the Lord blessing your hand. But as far as uh, what I can see in the New Testament book of Acts and from Fox's book of Martyrs, all 12 of the disciples didn't have a very good time. One of them was banished to the Isle of Patmos where he wrote, received Revelations, the book of Revelations. This is John. The other 11 all died unnatural deaths. Doesn't say anything about them amassing wealth. Apostle Paul was a single man till the day he died. He had his head cut off by Emperor Nero in Rome. Before his death, he had a rented place in Rome. He spent most of his life in prison, a good part of his life in prison. He was flogged many times and shipwrecked, fasted and prayed in prayer, deep prayer and intercession for Christians right around his known world at that time. Doesn't say anything about amassing wealth. And scripture says you don't need money to preach the gospel. So what are we doing trying to get all this money? Passing the bucket around every time there's a clap. And every time a visiting pastor comes through and goes bam and people fall on the floor. We pay them. How ridiculous is that? What's the church coming to? Or you think, falling on the floor, that guy's got the power, he's got the power on his hand. No, no, don't you pray for me. I want to be prayed by him. I want to feel that power, that anointing. Well, actually, if you have a look at the scripture, it says that uh, the word Christian, or the word Christ, means anointed one. So everyone who is a Christian is an anointed one. We all have an anointing. We accept the whole gospel by faith. We don't need the squealy feelies, the tickly wicklies. If you do, praise the Lord, that's great, hey, but you don't. I know one, one preacher that was marching back and forth, he was late to get up there on the uh, pulpit, he marched back and forth in the back room, crying out to God that he's not going to do it unless he gets the anointing. Come on, guys. You can correct me if I'm wrong. But it actually says, the book of Mark 16, Go into the world, preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth that is baptized shall be saved. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. They shall heal the sick. They shall, they shall um, speak in new tongues. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. They can take up serpents. And so they went and did. And the Lord confirmed with signs following. So as you do the job, preaching or exercising whatever gift, after all it's for other people, it's not for yourself. It's not to wave the big flag and say, I'm the big man, I'm the big man, see? When I put my hand on somebody, bam, they fall over. Sorry, you got it wrong. It's about doing the job and God confirming the signs following. I don't think he wants to point the finger at any person and emphasize any person as, uh, who has a specific gift. In fact, when I looked at the gospel, Jesus healed, and he told him not to say anything, and then he snuck off back into the crowd. So come on church, wake up. The fastest growing church in the West is the church of the unchurched. It's people that are sick of the rubbish that's happening there, so they go away. But they lay themselves open to the enemy and to persecution, one way or the other, and temptation, because they haven't got a brotherhood around them. We need to look after people, people, sheep. We need to be servants. God can then do something.